September is here, which means it's time for another Home Assistant update, and it's a big release this month with lots of excellent new additions, including even more Bluetooth upgrades with ESP Home and Home Assistant, Zigbee backups in the UI, a brand new helper for scheduling, and an overhaul on the automation editor. One of the biggest complaints I see with the automation editor is that if you're adding more than a couple of triggers and actions, things can get out of hand very quickly and become very unwieldy. This release sees a big overhaul to the automation editor to make it easier to keep track of everything that you have going on, but also to make it simpler to understand for beginners too. If you head into the automation editor now, you'll see that things look a little bit different, but also strangely familiar. This was done intentionally so as not to completely throw off those who are experienced with how the automation editor currently works by changing it completely, but also makes it easier for beginners to understand. The first big change here is that each section now features collapsible items within it that you can toggle to keep things tidier and cleaner. These items also have names that are auto-generated from the options you have selected, which is so useful for quickly identifying where a part of your automation is. And if you don't like the auto-generated names or it isn't as useful as you'd like it to be, then you can change the name to whatever you would like. Love it. This even extends to other things like the choose action. So for example, if you have a choose action that has many conditions and actions, these are also collapsible too and have their own names, which is great. Also, scripts benefit from this new UI too, same as the automation editor, nice. Another change inside the automation editor too is that if you're using the state as the trigger, now the on and off fields can be pre-populated with all of the known states for that device rather than having to manually type them in. You can of course still manually enter if something isn't being detected, but this is a huge step in the right direction and makes it easier and less confusing for new people who don't necessarily know how to find the correct state. Overall, I really like these changes and think they are a great step in the right direction. They are similar enough that things are still very familiar and you can still follow guides that use the older editor and find things very easily. But I do really like the improvements to the organization and clutter of things. Next up, this release also sees a brand new helper that lots of people have been clamoring for, a scheduler. Scheduler? Scheduler? Now you can go in and create a schedule for things that you do on a daily or weekly basis by clicking and selecting the times for one or even multiple days of the week. You can also add multiple schedules to one day if you want to. And once created, you can then use them in your automations and it's super easy to work with. If the current time is within your schedule, then the state will change to on. And if it's not within the schedule, then the state will be off. This is a great way to create automations that you do on a weekly basis. So for example, to empty the bins or to leave for work, or maybe you have a schedule that you want your robot vacuum to come out, or maybe for indoor cameras to turn on. Whatever it is, you can now easily create those with the new schedule input helper. Remember in the last release, we saw a huge update to Bluetooth within Home Assistant with some much needed improvements. Well, this release expands even further on that and adds one of my favorite new features, Bluetooth proxies. Bluetooth proxies works in combination with a new ESP Home update that just released also. And essentially this allows you to use your ESP 32s that you may already have around your house to effectively extend the range of Home Assistant's main Bluetooth adapter. So now devices that would otherwise be out of range of Home Assistant's main Bluetooth adapter can now communicate to Home Assistant by using ESP32s to relay that data from the device back to Home Assistant. The cool thing is that if you already have ESP Home devices around your house, it's a really simple addition to your existing devices to take advantage of this feature if you want to. Another good addition to Bluetooth is support for multiple adapters. That's really handy if you want to have one adapter doing certain integrations and then have a different adapter doing something else entirely. And finally, we see a new integration called BT Home, which is a way of creating your very own Bluetooth firmware for Bluetooth devices. To then get that information into Home Assistant, kind of like ESP Home, I guess, but for Bluetooth devices. 
that's a whole other topic in itself and probably requires its own video to explore. But do check out the project by Ernst Klammer if you are interested in using BT Home with Home Assistant. Another hugely welcome feature that I really love, man there's so many good features this release, is that ZHA supports backup and restore of Zigbee data right inside of the UI, which is amazing. So I made a video a while back about how to backup and migrate Zigbee sticks, but the whole process was a little bit complicated and involved doing everything in the command line. But now you can do all of this from the UI and it works even better than it did back then. If you head into devices and services, hit the configure button on ZHA and you will see a new backup and migration options. If you hit the backup button, it will allow you to save a backup right onto your computer for later use. You can also migrate from Zigbee to MQTT to ZHA if you want to also because ZHA supports Zigbee to MQTT backups, which is really nice. I'm not sure if you can go the other way and migrate from ZHA to Zigbee to MQTT. I haven't really looked into that yet, but this might open up that possibility for sure. ZHA can now also help you migrate from one Zigbee dongle to another Zigbee dongle, which is also really welcome, although there may be some limitations there, so do make sure to check the docs out for that. If you are a Z-Wave user, you can now get firmware updates for your Z-Wave devices directly through a new Z-Wave JS update server, instead of having to upload firmware updates manually, which should make things a little easier for supported devices. Of course, you can still use the update method manually if you want to, and that is still there, but this is a nice addition on top of that. There's also a nice way to view live CPU and memory usage inside of your Home Assistant instance too. So if you head over to settings, system, and then hardware, you will then be able to view real-time stats as they happen. This data will only start generating once you open the page, and this data is not stored by default, so you will want to use something like the system monitoring integration if you want to collect stats for viewing at a later date. But this is a great way of viewing spikes of usage as they happen in real time. As for the little things this month, there have been quite a few good ones. Firstly, you can now use Unify Protect cameras as a media source inside of the media browser, allowing you to retrieve video clips and thumbnails from your cameras inside of Home Assistant. There has been a thread network status and capability sensor added to HomeKit devices. This doesn't necessarily mean that much right now, but it is cool to see thread stuff start appearing. There has now been icons added all over the UI to give things a more polished look. And this SwitchBot integration got support for even more devices in this release also. In terms of new integrations this month, we see 13 new integrations available to use as well as five new integrations also available to set up in the UI instead of config files. As always, make sure to check out the breaking changes section. I don't see any major showstoppers this month with the list being pretty small, which is great, other than to check that you are on the required version of the Z-Wave JS add-on. Just make sure to update that add-on before updating Home Assistant if you haven't already done so. And that's about going to do it for this video. Lots of great changes this month. For me, I love the new automation UI. I think that is a great overhaul on the system and makes things cleaner and easier to automate. And I also really like the Bluetooth proxies feature, which we will need to perhaps delve into in the coming weeks. But what was your favorite feature from this release? Let me know down in the comments. Interested to hear your thoughts as always. And other than that, that is about going to do it for this video. Please make sure to hit the like button and get subscribed if you aren't already. We're getting close now and I will see you in the next video.